Welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. Are you over 40 and tired of struggling with your weight, dieting, and constantly feeling like you're starting over with nutrition and fitness? Do you wish you had more energy? Do you want to lose weight and finally keep it off for good? I'm Lil, a certified nutrition coach and former registered nurse. I too have been there, and at the age of 44, I decided I was done with fad diets and chasing a lower number on the scale. I was so tired of constantly starting over and wondering why I couldn't get lasting results. I became a nutrition coach and created the Feel Your Best formula for women who want to build muscle, lose fat, and keep it off for good. If you're ready to build a better relationship with food, the scale, and your body, let's build your formula for feeling your best. If you're new here, make sure to check the episode details for the link to my newbie starter guide. You'll receive an email straight to your inbox with everything you need to start building your Feel Your Best formula. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Lil, and I am here recording my very first episode of Feel Your Best Formula podcast, and that's what this podcast is going to be all about. It's about helping you feel your best, and I've been thinking about doing a podcast for actually a really long time, and it's one of those things that I kept talking myself out of. But more and more of you were asking me and saying that that is something that you would like to hear from me. And here we are. So thank you to everyone who has encouraged me. And first off, let me just say I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Um, I did my research before starting this podcast. And I kind of threw a lot of that advice in the trash can. I knew that I wanted to create a podcast that women like me would actually want to listen to and that would make the best use of your time because if you're anything like me, you are listening to your podcast while you're doing other things. You're driving your kids around in the car, you're grocery shopping, you're folding laundry, you're doing other household tasks, maybe you're out on a walk or a run. And you don't necessarily want to hear the same old intro and music and all that extra fluff every time. So the purpose of this episode is to give you a little overview of what the Feel Your Best Formula podcast will be all about and give you some background on how we got here and, you know, where I'm coming from and why I'm so passionate about kind of taking a different perspective on health, wellness, and how we are approaching those healthy habits that are so important. So you may have found me, you may have come here via my website, or perhaps Instagram, or maybe you're one of my friends that has seriously been around for, it's been about a decade since I first started blogging. So thank you, whoever you are, and however you got here, I really appreciate that you're taking time to listen to this. So If you're someone that's known me for a long time, then you will probably know some of the things that I talk about on this episode, but I'm also going to be sharing um, some things that I haven't spoken about, that I haven't shared on the blog or on social media. So um, yeah, okay, (laughs) let's dive in. So first of all, my name is Lil. Um, My full name is Lilius. That's why I website is called Life with Lilius. And I am a mom of two teen boys, which let me just say, the teen years, I know they get a bad rap, but I am having a lot of fun with it. I actually think it's pretty great. So if you're in another season of parenting, Perhaps if you have an infant or school-age kids, I'm just going to tell you the teen years aren't any better or worse than any other phase, and hopefully I can still say that in a few years once we get through it, but it's really bittersweet. It's really cool seeing your 
kids and just see how they're turning into little mini adults. Um, I'm married. My husband and I have been together for a really long time. We've been together since we were teenagers. We live in New England. We live in Massachusetts, and we also spend a lot of time in New Hampshire. And we really just love New England. I have to say, we've lived other places, and this is my home. I love the change of seasons. I love the people. I don't love the traffic so much, <laughs> but um, I'm definitely a New Englander through and through. And I can't forget, if you are on my Instagram, then you definitely know this other member of our family, but we have a really, really sweet pup, and her name is Jade, and she's, oh, I just said her name, and she's looking at me. <laughs> um, she is 11 years old, and we rescued her. I need to take a sip of water here. I'm not sure if I'll edit that out. I'm going to keep this, you know, pretty... <laughs> Um, just, um, yeah, I'm not going to have a very fancy podcast, so there might be me taking sips of water here and there. But anyway, Jade is our dog, and she's just the absolute love of our family. We all adore her, and she's 11 years old, but she thinks she's a puppy, so she's really great. Um, that's sort of the basics on our family. Um, about me, I love food. About 10 years ago, I actually started my very first blog, and that was just more meant for friends and family initially. I love to cook. I've always loved to cook. I'm a self-taught cook. And my friends and my family would text me and say, oh, I've got a pound of salmon. Lil, what should I do with this? And I spent a lot of time answering messages like that. And then one day, my brother just texted me and he lives overseas and he said, I'm really tired of having to, you know, wait the six hours for you to wake up in the morning so that I can ask you a question for a recipe. So I bought you this domain. Can you just, here, here's the blog. Can you just start posting your recipes on there? And that's kind of how it all started. It gave me the courage to just put it out there and things kind of grew from there. I had my little blog and um, I became an online health and fitness coach with helping people with nutrition and fitness. And I did that very happily for since 2014. And then um, things, you know, over the past few years for everyone, the world just got a little crazy. And our family had its own struggles. Um, I definitely shared a little bit about how um, I suffered a really extreme back pain episode for months where I went from working out every day and being really active to literally not even be able to bend over to tie my shoes. I went to physical therapy. I went to... um, a special spine doctor, and ultimately an MRI showed that I had arthritis in my lower back and hip. And um, that really just kind of changed my perspective on, you know, how I was going to move forward. And I knew I couldn't go back to those um, habits and routines as a fitness coach that I had developed, where I was kind of always you know, working on the latest diet trend and also doing whatever new fitness program came out that I should be promoting. And I was kind of not doing what I should have been doing for myself. And instead of um, following what would have been best for me, I was just kind of following a one size fits all that someone else had formed. You know, this is how you're supposed to eat. This is the workout program. On Monday, you do this workout. On Tuesday, you do that workout. And I could not keep up with it. And I felt really overwhelmed. I felt like, what the heck is going on here? I felt like I really almost needed to start from scratch. So at that time, I was really reevaluating my business as a health and fitness coach. And at the same time that I was kind of coming out of my back pain and starting to change direction with my business, 
we experienced a really scary thing in my family. Um, my husband called me from work one day saying he didn't feel well. He was having difficulty with his eyesight um, and these other symptoms. And this was during quarantine, and he had gone into work in a building, a large building, where there really wasn't anyone else there. And I said, I'm coming. I'm coming to get you. I said, can you meet me downstairs? Because I was nervous about calling an ambulance because I was afraid they wouldn't be able to find him. And he was able to meet me downstairs. I brought him immediately to the emergency room where they very quickly determined that he was actually... um, he was having a stroke and it was very scary. And even during that time, um, they were not allowing visitors, you know, in with patients in the emergency room. He said to them, my wife is a nurse. Can you please let her in here? And they let me in. And so I was there the whole time and it was really scary. Um, it is hands down the scariest thing I've ever experienced myself. Um, and that whole, um, so I'll say he is okay. (laughs) He, thankfully, because he got the treatment so quickly, um, and the location that it was in his brain, he is 100% fine. And it was actually a result of a cardiac arrhythmia that they found. Um, it took about six to eight weeks after the stroke to actually figure out, like, why the heck did he have this? And, um, that was a scary process too, not knowing, you know, why this thing had happened at such a young age. And during that time too, I really started questioning, you know, what am I doing? What is important? Um, how do I want to be coaching other people? And what do I want to be focusing on? And I just realized that some of my values and the direction that I wanted to go had really, really changed a lot than what I had been accustomed to, you know, for the previous seven or eight years. And our family really experienced a really difficult time, starting with my back issue, my husband's stroke. Then we moved into directly just a couple weeks after my husband had a stroke. Um, His dad had a bone marrow transplant, and originally my husband was supposed to be the donor which um, thankfully that was not the case because he would not have been able to be the donor um, because of everything that happened. But we then moved into this phase where we were taking care of my father-in-law and we had all this other stuff happening with other members of our family. And I will tell you, it was so overwhelming and I was having such a hard time trying to stick to my workouts and stick to my diet. And all these things were going around in my head where I was kind of feeling like a failure, but also at the same time questioning, saying, you know, maybe I'm focusing on the wrong thing. Maybe this isn't the solution. Maybe sticking to this diet plan that someone else made isn't really a solution for me right now. Maybe trying to stick to this workout program calendar, which believe me, I was not able to do at all during this time. And it really got me thinking, and I am honestly so grateful for it. And as we went through the next year and a half, two years, I really stepped away from social media and I I wanted to hit the pause button and say, what do I really want to focus on? What is important to me? What message do I want to put out into the world? And I really came to the conclusion that I didn't really want to be helping people specifically with nutrition and fitness because that wasn't really the answer. Instead, during that time, what I started to do was move away from those things that I had, that I had relied on for you know the past seven, eight years And I started to say, okay, this is what my day looks today. This is what I had to do because every day was looking different. Um, I wasn't necessarily going to be in the same place or have the same availability of food. Um, It was very chaotic. And I would look at my day and I would just decide that day, what can I do today that I can go to bed at night and I can feel like I took care of myself. I took care of my family. um, I took care of my mental health. 
and I can go to bed at night and feel good about it. And that's just what I started focusing on. And what really became so powerful for me was creating these systems and routines at certain points in my day, my week, and my month where I was really hitting the reset button. I was really prioritizing what really mattered to me. And I was intentionally creating these daily habits and routines that worked for me. And when I tell you how powerful that was, when I finally let go of these former expectations and thinking to myself, I think this is a trap we fall into a lot as women. We think, oh, you know, back when I was skinny, I was doing X, Y, Z. I was running five miles a day. Um, That's what I need to do to get skinny again. I think we fall into that trap where we have these thoughts in our head that we need to do today something that we thought worked for us at a different point in our life where our life was completely different. Instead, what we need to do is look at what does my life look like today and go from there. Decide what do I want my life to look like? What are the things I can control? What are the things I can't control? Because let me tell you, if you've ever listened to, oh oh gosh, I remember years ago, I remember listening to this guy, and he's a very popular, successful podcaster and blogger. He walked through this morning routine. Let me tell you, (laughs) I laughed and I laughed. It was like this two plus hour morning routine literally starting with this shower and then like um, a sauna and walking in the park and then doing this like one sort of workout and then a meditation. And I just was like, listen, (laughs) as a mom, there is absolutely no way that I can do that every day. And I'm sure his life was wonderful and I'm sure he was very relaxed and I'm sure that really impacted his success. But that is not going to work for me. Instead, what I had to look at was the constraints that I had on my day-to-day life. What can I really say no to? What do I have to say yes to? And what is the most important thing that I can do that then is going to have a positive ripple effect on the rest of my day? And so that's really the topics that we're going to talk about on this podcast. There's so many pieces to the solution for you. And what I want to do is help you create that roadmap for your success. And I think the first thing we need to do is really ask ourselves, is that messaging is a one size fits all approach? Is me trying to follow this particular diet? Um, is it going to be enjoyable to me? Same thing with your workouts. Is this going to be enjoyable to me? Or is this something that's going to create more stress in my life? And really finding that balance of what is something that I can do in the short term that feels good, that's also going to help me feel good six months, 12 months, you know, two years from now. I personally have really switched my focus on my own journey to thinking of those long-term results. Like I want to be 80 years old and running around with my grandkids and enjoying life. And chasing a number on the scale is just not it for me anymore. And also thinking about how these daily habits and routines can really just bring joy to your life because then you're more organized. And it's not perfect, believe me. My house does not look like a page out of a magazine. Um, It's so, you know, life is messy in general. So it's about letting go of those like really unattainable expectations and just asking ourselves, what does my, what does my best feel like? And creating that formula for yourself. So I hope you enjoy this podcast. I'm going to be recording more to come, but this one is just to kind of give you an idea. If this is something you want to talk more about, think about, 
then I hope you'll keep tuning in. And I so appreciate if you're still listening. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. I'm going to make sure to put some links in the episode here below um, so that you can find my website, um, maybe sign up for my newsletter, things like that. And I'm still figuring this out um, as I go. So hopefully I recorded this right and it's actually going to end up (laughs) Um, being published on the podcast app. So thank you again, and I hope that you have the best week. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to check the episode details for my new listener starter guide and any additional resources mentioned in the episode can also be found in the show notes on my website. You can always find me on Instagram at Macros with Lil. And for more healthy lifestyle tips, recipes, and information on my one-to-one and group coaching services, make sure to check out my website. All the links can be found below. If you know someone else who is ready to start building their formula for feeling their best, please share the love and send them a link to the podcast. I hope you found today's episode helpful and I'll see you back here next week for a brand new one.